uh, as you may know, an ecosystem is an association of a community of organisms, like animals and plants, and their physical environment. So the, the place where they grow or live uh, is characterized by climate, by a certain rocks, bedrocks, soils, etc. And this affects on their uh, lives, on their growth and, and behavior. An ecosystem functioning is about understanding how this works. It's really like taking this as a kind of machine and seeing how it works. So how do uh, the animals and plants behave in their uh, environment? And how does their environment affect them? And so it's all about relationships between very different things. And that's the way ecology works, basically. So you have to, for example, you look at uh, uh, the effect of carbon or rainfall on the growth of plants. And this translates into plants as a growth, but also as reproduction and survival. And then you enter uh, biological processes, you enter genetics, because when plants or animals reproduce, uh, genetics comes, in, comes in, into play. When you have genetics, you have evolution, so the plants, animals adapt to their environment, but the environment may change, etc. So all these processes create a dynamics, which is the, the dynamics of the ecosystem, and really the, the ecosystem emerges uh, as, uh, from all these interactions. And that's why, as you can see, as you can imagine, it's a very complex system, and that's what what trying to understand by doing uh, by studying ecosystem functioning that's what it means nowadays in uh, urban planning and architecture people want to use uh, plants as uh, nature based solutions to cool a city or to provide shade or other services and uh, but most people don't know how plants work so if i ask you what what does a plant need to grow can you tell me I tell you, I know that it's water, sun, yeah. and then some nutrients from the soil. Yeah. And I'm um, pretty sure they need some food as well. Yeah, and they also need carbon. So the famous or infamous CO2 that you, you find in the air is used by plants to build their body uh, through photosynthesis. So photosynthesis is using the sunlight as an energy source to catalyze chemical reactions which assemble CO2 molecules into sugars and then sugars are the basic bricks to be all the plant materials so proteins, lipids, everything. And, uh, but nutrients are also needed to build this because the, the body is not only made of carbon and hydrogen, it's also made of nitrogen, oxygen, and uh, phosphate, uh, phosphate uh, potassium, etc. So the thing is that uh, at a large scale, the carbon cycle and the water cycle are coupled by, by the plants, actually. So the carbon cycle is uh, photosynthesis. Uh, so you get uh, CO2 from the atmosphere. It's photosynthesized by plant into plant matter, the plant dies, the matter returns to the soil where, the, where it is decomposed as a CO2 again. So that's a cycle. And the water cycle is you have rain arriving on, on the soil, the plants taking the water and then transpiring it back to the atmosphere and then it will, uh, it will come back as water later or the water goes to a river, to the sea, and evaporates again. So it's, these are big uh, bio geochemical cycles. And they are coupled by the plant. Uh, how? It's made, it, it's made at a very uh, tiny level, which is uh, the plant leaves. So when um, the you have to know that uh, leaves are completely impermeable to gases and uh, liquids, uh, except at some little places which are called stomata, which are basically holes that the plant can control. So uh, they can be open or closed. 
And to get the carbon in, the plant has to open the stomata. But the, the problem a plant has, so to control photosynthesis, basically you control the entrance of CO2 and you get more or less carbon uh, sugar synthesized, depending on the light. The problem is the plant sits at some place and ca can't move if it's too hot or too cold. So when it's getting very hot, the plant has to cool itself. And to, use that, uh, to, to do that, they use uh, transpiration, so evaporation of water, exactly as we do when we sweat. So a plant transpires water. But as it's impermeable, the water goes out through the same stomata as carbon gets in. So basically, when you have not enough water for a plant, it will close its stomata. So no carbon can get in anymore. So when the plant is water stressed, it can't grow. So that's where the coupling is. Oh, at the, a very fine scale, which is two cells in a leaf. So this, uh, this to say that when you want to use plants in a design, you have to take care about water stress, because if the plants can't grow, they can't do anything useful uh, for you. If they don't transpire, they won't cool the atmosphere around them. So you need to provide water to plants. And that's where the, the design comes in, because you have to make sure they, there is enough water, even during a dry season, for, for the plants to provide services to, to, the, to the city. In ecology and uh, other sciences, we use what is called uh, system thinking, which is the idea that uh, a system works as a whole even if there is no central control of the system. For example, an ecosystem, it's a whole. But uh, so to understand it, you have first to look at the big constraints uh, that are present uh, that will shape the ecosystem organization and functioning. For example, uh, when you are in a, and, the, and the city could be viewed uh, as an ecosystem. So it, it's marked by a, a climate, by a, topography by uh, hydrology, which will build up the constraints uh, on which you have to, uh, for which you have to adapt to survive or to be present. For example, in the Mediterranean region, you will have a climate with uh, strong droughts, heavy rains, uh, which can cause floods, and uh, a high risk of uh, fires. Whereas if you were in a more temperate region, you would have more problems with, for example, uh, uh, too much snow or cold in winter, and uh, maybe not enough sun in summer for plants to grow, etc. So the first thing is to look at these big constraints, and then you get into the details. So if my vegetation is fire prone, how can I manage that so that the uh, in order to minimize the fire risk, etc. But you won't do that in a country where they, uh, there is no fire risk, of course. So the, the idea basically is to take the big picture first and then get into more detail and detail and to see what's really, uh, uh, what, what are the technical points on which you can uh, really work.